Hi friends! I really hope that your little enjoyed our video on emiscibility and the mixing or not mixing of liquids. In this video, I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how we pulled off each of the experiments and how you can do them in your own home. Are you ready? Let's get started! Our first experiment is simply oil and water. This is a very straightforward experiment, but it can provide hours of fun for your toddlers and kiddos. This is what you're gonna need. Vegetable oil, water, food coloring, a clear glass or jar that your kiddos can see through. And then we use pipettes so that we have better control over where the water goes in the oil. If you would like to get pipettes, we have a link in the description below on where you can get some. You can also simply use a spoon to drop the water into the oil. Once you've placed the oil in your clear glass or jar, you'll want to mix your water with food coloring to make it just a little bit more interesting. So you can also do this experiment in a glass if you know that you're just going to toss it out when you're done. However, I recommend doing it in a jar that has a sealed lid because once you're done, you can continue using this experiment for quite some time before it needs to be thrown away. So this jar has been sealed for about two weeks and the vegetable oil is getting a little bit murky, but it still works and it provides hours of fun for Hazel to rock back and forth and look at. It's really interesting. So once you're set up, all you need is your kiddo to come on over and drop the water into the oil. Another great thing about this experiment is once they've placed the oil, sorry, once they've placed the water into the oil, it's fun to get them to mix it up and see if they can actually get the oil and water to mix together. Because they're immiscible, it will never happen, but it's a lot of fun to give them a chance to try. So the second experiment that we perform on the video is a density tower. While I practice all of these experiments with Hazel ahead of time, to know that they're toddler and kid safe, I can't guarantee that they're gonna be mess free. So I highly recommend putting on an old t-shirt, an apron, a painter's smock, Hazel and I wear lab coats to make it a little more sciencey. Just something that's gonna protect their clothes from the food coloring and the liquids that we use in the experiments. For the density tower, you're gonna need light corn syrup, dish soap, plain old water, vegetable oil, rubbing alcohol, food coloring if you want to change the color of your liquids, a clear glass jar, and a pipette. So the one thing that you really need for the density tower is patience. Um, some of the liquids, as they're more dense and sticky, take a while to get out of the jars and into your own jar. So we'll start with the light corn syrup. This is one that we colored in the video red to make it stand out against the others. But for now, uh, we'll just leave it the color that it is. So you'll wanna do a nice thick layer of corn syrup. See, it takes a while. and it's sticky, so be careful. So the next thing we're gonna put on top of the corn syrup is the dish soap. And this can be any kind of dish soap that you have at the house. You wanna make sure that when you're adding the layers that you're trying to keep them off the sides of the jar. want a really thick layer 
of dish soap because next we're gonna use water. So you want a substantial layer between the corn syrup and the water that you're gonna put in next. So the water is gonna pick up whichever color your dish soap is. So we left it clear in the video because it will turn light blue as it picks up the color um, in our dish soap. For the water, it's really important that you pour it slowly so that it doesn't cause bubbles. Um, if you get bubbles in there, you're gonna have to start over. And it can be a little nerve wracking. <laughs> Okay, we're bubble free so far. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more water. Okay, and you can see the water starting to pick up that color right there. But of course you're always welcome to color the water if you want it to be different. Okay, so then next we're gonna do the oil. And we know that the oil and water is miscible. The tricky part here is the soap below. So you'll want to pour the oil in slowly as well. Well, there we've done it. We've made a little bit of bubble. <laughs> um, it does take patience and sometimes it can take a bit of practice. So then up next, we're going to use the rubbing alcohol. Again, you don't want to allow your kiddo to do this by themselves. And I recommend if you're going to color the alcohol that you do it because it does have a really strong smell. So we'll go ahead and color it so that it's easier to see on top of the oil. Whew. That is a really strong smell. So make sure that you're in an area that's well ventilated. Uh, typically we open up our back door since we're in the kitchen. So go ahead and add your food coloring. The other interesting thing about this is that when you add food coloring to rubbing alcohol, it doesn't mix together, but it doesn't stay in water droplets like it does with the um, lava lamps. So when you mix it up, it's also gonna leave kind of like flakes in there which is really fun for your kiddo to look at. If you want a close-up picture of what it looks like when you add food coloring to rubbing alcohol, you can go to our Instagram page at Hazel's Mom Official, and we have some pictures up there. Okay, so once you have this, ooh, <laughs> mixed together, then you're gonna need to use your pipette to slowly, slowly, add the rubbing alcohol to the oil on top. Rubbing alcohol and oil are not immiscible, so they will mix. That's the reason you need to go slow. the rubbing alcohol starting to make the layer on top and you can add as much or as little as you want. Once you're done you'll want to seal this again with um, a jar that seals, a lid that seals, and then your kiddo can very, very slowly tip the density tower and watch all the layers move with it. Yeah, it's really cool. So the third experiment that we perform in the video, or the lava lamp experiment, is also very straightforward and is oil and water with an extra step. For this experiment, you're going to need vegetable oil, water, food coloring, a 
clear plaster jar and some Alka-Seltzer. So there are two ways to perform this video. One is if you're already doing oil and water and your kiddo is done adding their water to the oil and they're not looking to keep the experiment, you can simply drop Alka-Seltzer into this jar or glass. The second way to perform this is how we did it in the video. If you layer your oil and water, then you can have your kiddo drop the food coloring through the oil. It's really interesting to do that because the the food coloring droplets won't always break the surface of the water and they'll sit like beads between the layers of the oil and water. So that's really interesting then for, for them to look at and kind of think about why that's happening. Then you simply add Alka-Seltzer and watch it go. Eventually the bubbles will pick up the food coloring that's sitting between the layers. And there you go. You have your very own in-home lava lamp. Well, that's the end of this video, but if you found it helpful and you want to watch more of our videos, click the big red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. If you perform these experiments with your kiddos, I would love to see how they turned out. You can post your pictures on Instagram and tag us at Official Explorer. If you have comments or suggestions on different ways that we can perform these experiments, or you have an idea for experiment that you'd like to see us perform, leave us a comment in the comment section. Happy experimenting. Bye.